New York says that this is very inhibitive of the atomic nuclear. It mainly deals with the neutrons and protons within the nuclear and how they interact with each other and external influences. It is the area of physics dealing with nuclear energy, including reactors and bombs. The nucleus of an atom is the relatively small, dense, positively charged mass at the atom's center. It consists of two types of particles, the positively charged protons and the neutrally charged neutrons. They are bound together in the nucleus by the residual strong nuclear force between these particles. The simplest atomic nuclear is found in hydrogen and consists of a single proton. Others are more complicated, including helium, which consists of two protons and two neutrons. The atomic nucleus is the densest part of the atom, and the elements of each atom is determined by the number of protons in the nucleus. The number of protons in the nucleus of an atom is called the atomic number, and it is unique to each element. By contrast, the number of neutrons in an atom can vary in what are called isotopes. Isotopes are the variations within atoms of the same element, distinguished by the number of neutrons in the nucleus. In writing, isotopes are distinguished by a particle number that equals the total number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus. The written designation is given by the particle number and the element symbol, such as uranium-235, uranium-238, carbon-12, carbon-14. Each isotope has its own set of unique properties. The particle number is the total number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus. The atomic number is the number of protons in the nucleus, and it is unique to the element. The atomic weight is the mass of the isotope, the atomic mass unit, where one atomic mass unit is 1.66 times 10 to the negative 26 kilograms. The half-life is the time that it takes half of a radioisotope to decay. Stable isotopes have an infinite half-life. Hydrogen-1 is the most common form of hydrogen, and it makes up 99.985% of all hydrogen atoms in the universe. It has an atomic number of 1 and a particle number of 1, consisting of a single proton and no neutron. It has an atomic weight of 1.007825, and it is stable. Deuterium is the second most common form of hydrogen making up about 0.0156% of all hydrogen atoms in the universe. It has an atomic number of 1 and a particle number of 1, having 1 proton and 1 neutron, and an atomic weight of 2.0141017, and it is stable. Tritium is the third most common form of hydrogen. It exists in only trace amounts. It has an atomic number of 1 and a particle number of 1, consisting of 1 proton and 2 neutrons. It has an atomic weight of 3.0160492, and it has a half-life of 12.32 years. Helium-3 is the second most common form of helium. It makes up about 0.000137% of all helium atoms in the universe. It has an atomic number of 2 and a particle number of 3, consisting of 2 protons and 1 neutron. It has an atomic weight of 3.0160293, and it is stable. Helium-4 is the most common form of helium, consisting of about 99.999863% of all helium atoms in the universe. It has an atomic number of 2 and a particle number of 4, consisting of 2 protons and 2 neutrons. It also has an atomic weight of 4.00260. And it is stable. Note the depiction of helium nuclei within this carbon 12 nucleus. Alpha decay in larger atoms suggests that larger nuclei are subdivided into helium nuclei. Now, helium 12 is the most common form of carbon, consisting of about 98.89% of all carbon atoms in the universe. It has an atomic number of 6 and a particle number of 12 consisting of 6 protons and 6 neutrons. It has an atomic weight of 12, and it is stable. Carbon-14 is the third most common form of carbon, and it consists of about 1 part per trillion of all carbon atoms. It has an atomic number of 6 and a particle number of 14, consisting of 6 protons and 8 neutrons. It has an atomic weight of 14.003241, and a half-life of 5,730 years. It's commonly used in a form of radiometric dating. Nuclear fission is the process of splitting an atomic nucleus into two smaller atomic nuclei. The two isotopes most commonly used in fission are uranium-235 and plutonium-239. 
Uranium fission, which is a form of nuclear fission used in nuclear reactors, starts with a neutron colliding with a uranium-235 atom, turning it into an energetic uranium-236 atom. This uranium-236 atom is so energetic that it quickly splits into a krypton atom and a beryllium atom, along with three neutrons, which can go on to cause other fission events. This animation is an illustration of nuclear fission in action. Let's take another look at that. The chain reaction is the process of the neutrons from one nuclear fusion event causing others. This process forms a chain of fusion events that can run away if the number of neutrons is not controlled. The number of neutrons is controlled in a nuclear reactor, but not in a bomb. This is an animation of a nuclear chain reaction. Let's take another look at that. Controlled uranium fission is a major source of energy in several nations, including the United States. In fact, several billion uranium-235 atoms probably gave their all to bring you this video. Nuclear fusion is a joining of small atomic nuclei into larger atomic nuclei. Given enough energy, theoretically any two nuclei can fuse. However, most possible fusion reactions cannot be used to produce energy. For a fusion reaction to be a usable source of energy, it has to meet several criteria. First of all, it has to be exothermic, which means it has to produce heat. Now, while this is obvious, it does keep the reactants to nuclei with low numbers of protons. They also tend to produce plasma nuclei of very tight bonding, such as helium-4. They have to use low Z nuclei, that is, nuclei with low numbers of protons. This is because the electrostatic repulsion of protons needs to be overcome for nuclei to get close enough to fuse. With high Z nuclei, electrostatic repulsion, it uses too much energy to be exothermic. We must have exactly two reactants. This is because a density less than that of the core of a star. Three body collisions are too improbable for energy production. They must produce at least two products. This makes energy and momentum conservation both possible in the same reaction. It also requires conservation of protons and neutrons. Their weak interaction cross sections are simply too small to be practical for an energy source. Here is an illustration of a tritium to tritium reaction producing helium 4 and 2 neutrons. Here is an animation of tritium to tritium fusion to form helium 4. Let's take another look at that. Nuclear fusion is the energy source for stars. It is the one energy source that has potential to be a virtually limitless clean source of energy. It is the ultimate form of nuclear energy since its fuel is flexible and its byproduct is non-radioactive helium. Nuclear energy is the use of nuclear fission or fusion to derive energy from these reactions. There are two ways of tapping nuclear energy, nuclear bomb and nuclear reactor. There are two types of nuclear bombs. Fission bombs that use either uranium or plutonium, and fusion bombs that use tritium fusion. They are actually triggered by small fission bombs. They are mainly used as weapons, having been used in war only twice at the end of World War II. However, it has also been proposed to use them to propel spacecraft in what is called a nuclear pulse engine. 
The generation of electricity is the main peaceful use of nuclear energy. The electricity used to make this video came from such a power plant. The main use of a nuclear reactor is generating electricity. One type of nuclear reactor, called the breeder reactor, makes plutonium, producing more nuclear fuel than it consumes. Nuclear reactors can also be used for transportation. Nuclear subs are commonly used for military purposes. Their big advantage is that they can go a long time without refueling or even resurfacing. Nuclear rockets are another possible use of a nuclear reactor. One design was actually built and tested in 1964, but none has ever flown in space. Called NERVA, it was a solid core nuclear rocket. However, liquid core and gas core engines have also been explored in theory, though never built. Nuclear energy has many possible applications. Some of the crazier ones include nuclear cars and planes. While not without risk, it is the safest and most efficient energy source in use today. The strong nuclear force is the fundamental force of nature that is the binding force of the atomic nucleus. The other three fundamental forces are electromagnetism, the weak force, and gravity. On the atomic scale, strong force is about 100 times stronger than electromagnetism in orders of magnitude stronger than the weak force and gravity. The strong force acts mainly on the quarks that make up protons and neutrons. The particle that transmits this force is appropriately called a gluon. Two up quarks and one down quark make up a proton. Two down quarks and one up quark make up a neutron. In both cases, the blue lines go back and forth between the quarks, binding them together. This is the beginning of the binding force of the atomic nuclear. The gluons that bind the quarks of the proton and neutron together also hold a quark-antiquark -quark pair called a pion together. A gluon can decay to form a pion. The pion helps transmit a residual part of the strong force between the protons and neutrons of the atomic nucleus. The quark of the pion swaps places with a quark in the receiving proton or neutron. This residual part of the strong nuclear force is called the residual strong force, or just the nuclear force. This nuclear force binds protons and neutrons into atomic nuclei. The weak nuclear force is the fundamental force in nature that is responsible for several forms of particle decay, including the beta decay of atomic nuclei. The other three fundamental forces are the strong nuclear force, electromagnetism, and gravity. Negative beta decay is the process where a neutron is turned into a proton while emitting an electron and electron antineutrino. This process involves a down quark decaying into an up quark, an electron, and an electron antineutrino. The intermediate particle of the weak nuclear force is called a W boson. While negative beta decay is not the only process involving the W boson, it is the most common since negative beta decay is a main form of atomic nuclear decay. This is a Feynman diagram of negative beta decay of a neutron into a proton, electron, and electron antineutrino by way of a W boson. The process starts with a down quark in the neutron decaying into an up quark and a W boson, turning the neutron into a proton. The W boson quickly decays into an electron and an electron antineutrino. See the following animation. Let's take another look at that. Nuclear decay is the process where an unstable atomic nucleus loses energy by emitting ionizing particles with a net loss of rest mass to the nucleus. While there are many types of nuclear decay, there are two main ones found in nature, alpha decay and negative beta decay. In alpha decay, the nucleus ejects an alpha particle. An alpha particle is a helium atomic nucleus consisting of two protons and two neutrons. The process reduces the atomic number of the atom by two, changing the element. In negative beta decay, a neutron emits a beta particle and an electron antineutrino to become a proton. Beta particles are actually negatively charged electrons. This process increases the atomic number of the nucleus by one, turning it into a different element. 
For collections of radioactive nuclei, there is a characteristic decay rate. The decay rate is usually designated by the isotope's half-life, which is the time needed for half of the isotope to decay. This half-life is independent of the amount of the parent isotope. Here is a video illustration of the decay of a radioactive sample. Let's take another look at that. Note that the more atoms of the parent isotope there are, the more nuclei will decay in a given unit of time. This is why the half-life is independent of the amount of the parent isotope. Nuclear decay is often used in determining the age of a sample. However, there are assumptions involved in the process. It is especially assumed that the half-life of an isotope is constant. Accelerated nuclear decay is the process by which nuclear decay proceeds at a faster rate than normal. Small amounts of accelerated nuclear decay have been observed in beta decay under some circumstances. While accelerated alpha decay has never been directly observed, evidence for it does exist in the retention of radiogenic helium by zircon crystals. Accelerated nuclear decay would look identical to normal decay, but faster. For example, here is our earlier video illustration at its normal rate. Here is the same decay process accelerated by a factor of 2. The main argument against the hypothesis that the retention of radiogenic helium by zircon crystals shows substantial alpha decay is heat. The other common argument is the lack of an observed cause of accelerated alpha decay. However, there are theoretical answers to both. The real reason for resistance to the hypothesis that the retention of radiogenic helium by zircon crystals shows substantial accelerated alpha decay is the fact that it would drastically reduce radiometric ages. However, none of these arguments change the fact that measured helium diffusion rates in zircon crystals are a perfect match to a model showing accelerated alpha decay about 6,000 years ago. Nuclear physics is basically the science of the atomic nuclear. It describes varieties of atoms within the same element called isotopes. It also describes the bonding forces of the nuclear, as well as how and why they decay. Nuclear physics has made available a powerful and relatively clean source of energy. However, because that energy can also be used to create a devastating bomb, it is also fear. Yet future developments in fusion have the potential of producing an even safer and cleaner source of energy. 